Somebody else. I don't feel like everybody's minded the Lord. I got something on my doing some quick preparing for a message. And uh the Lord laid a thought on my mind and, and uh I want to be ready, don't you? That's what we need to uh study. Yeah. And uh I'm going to get part of it. I, I guess I'll get what the Lord wants me to share with you. Turn it over to Matthew, if you would. I, like, I, I had a thought there a minute ago. If we would all remember, uh, we're often talking about uh, starting off of Matthew chapter uh, 19, I believe is where we're going to start. And if my eyes will help me here, and I'll be uh, very observant here. But we're so often, and, and so many times I've called on folks to testify and share about when the Lord saved them. The church, if we'll, if we'll remember, uh, Linda and I was talking before church. If we come looking for uh, uh, trouble, if we come looking for problems, uh, we'll find them. We sure will. If we dig deep enough, if you, uh, you want to see any... Uh, shortcomings in me hang around it won't take you long but i tell you what we could look and look and look i've seen it many a times uh well i'm going to be in 18 chapter 18 but i've seen it many a times folks losers loses their desire to come to church now you watch this some of you that uh has been there uh Folks loses their desire to come to church. Uh, they 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 uh, just get lazy, and they say they're going to come. Well, after they quit coming, and they don't come for a while, they begin to start finding excuses about like uh, we are as children. Our children, we'll get we'll, one of the kids will mess up or do something, and. Uh, and that's the way it was at the Herald House when we was growing up. If we got busted or if we got caught doing something, we all the time going to blame somebody else. We'll blame one of the other kids. Now, folks loses their desire to come to church. They lose their desire to serve the Lord. Condemnation sets in. It sure does. And uh, sooner or later, after a while, it don't happen at first. I've been do dealing with this a long time. I'm not, uh, this is not my first rodeo, as old saying. But I've dealt with people, and they, they say, well, it's not anybody's fault but my own. I've just been lazy. I haven't been coming to church. And then, after a while, give them a few more weeks and they start finding fault with the church. Now there was somebody they keep thinking and keep pondering. And they find that they remember. Listen, they start digging. Start, got to get an excuse. They start thinking about somebody may have been a year ago or five years ago that upset them, made them mad. Not that they ever upset nobody or made them mad. They said that's what I'll use. But boys, it ain't going to work on that day. Because the Bible said the kingdom of God is likened unto this. But as I was saying, y'all pray for me and, 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 and some of you, if the Lord gives you something, cut in. Because this is fresh off of the stove. Yes, sir. It's hot out of the oven. And uh, I, I'm just going to have to depend on the Lord refreshing my memory and helping me. And y'all help me. But uh, if we will remember, listen, when we got saved, if we'll look back at the situation that we was in, Ronnie, we tried everything to satisfy us and everything to help us and everything to, to uh, uh, comfort us, and we could not find nothing. Do you remember, Chris, when you got saved? Yeah. There was only one thing that you could see, and it was a light from that lighthouse. Praise the Lord forever. That's what we need to remember, church. That's what got us. And that's what rescued us was the light of God. Friends was gone. Our job, listen, was not good enough. Our friends was not good enough. Our pleasures and our treasures was not good enough to rescue us. There was only one help, and that came through and by Jesus Christ. And I thank Him. Praise the Lord forever. If we make it to heaven... A lot of folks don't uh, don't see it this way, 
But boys, if we make it to heaven, we're going to make it his way. Praise the Lord. We're going to make it his way and only his way. The Bible said in 18 of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 23. And like I said, be much in prayer and help me because I really need it. The Bible said, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. When he began to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. For, but for as much as he had not to pay, the Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children, all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of his death. Praise the Lord. Did you get what I'm saying? Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. We owed a debt that we could not pay. And listen to me. We got down on our knees and began to cry out to God. And the mercy and the love of God is what will get us into the kingdom of God. Now let's turn over, if you would, chapter 20. The Bible said, For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went out and out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And again he went out about the sixth and the ninth and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour and he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here? All the day idle, they, they said unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Oh, listen, if I was rewriting the Bible and don't have it, any right, and it's not needed, but I would add verse 1, after verse 7, for the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder. Praise the Lord forever. Church, if we get there, it's going to be his way. Praise the Lord forever. And moving along, if I don't lose my place here, chapter 22, the Bible said, Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is, to, uh, is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son, sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which, which were bidden, Behold, I prepare my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, all things are ready coming to the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murders and burned up their cities. Chris, the kingdom of God, listen, is likened unto this. We're going his way, Ronnie, or we're not going in. The Bible said, turn it over now into verse 23, I believe, verse er, chapter 24. And the Bible said, listen to me. Let me get lined out here. <coughs> Chapter 25. And then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Listen to me. The Bible teaches us that whosoever, not everyone, the 
that says, Lord, Lord's going to enter into the kingdom of God. There's a lot of people going to sleep. There's a lot of people, listen, we're closer to the kingdom of God than anybody has ever been before. Listen to me. We're closer to the coming, second coming of Jesus Christ more than we ever have before. These people that's run well, Chris, there's people that started a good race, but boys, they slumbered and slept. They've grown weary. Listen to me. The Bible teaches me in that day, and listen, there'll be some stand before him. They'll say, Lord, haven't we done all these marvelous works in thy name? And the word says, he'll depart, he'll say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know ye not. We're going to a city, listen to me, whose builder and maker is God, and the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. We're going his way or the other way. That's the only two ways that we can go. The only way that we'll be in the kingdom of heaven is to be Christ-like and to be like he commands us to be. Amen. It don't take a whole lot for people to sell out. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. When we was a growing up, I, I, I don't know how old I was when Mama got her first automatic washer. But there was this lady that, that we went to church with and I never will forget about it. We thought it was the most terrible thing in the world and didn't know a whole lot about it. But for a long time, uh, listen, uh, all we know was a ringer washer. Mommy would get her fingers, and most of the time when she'd get her fingers uh, or her hands in them ringers, uh, it was because she was turning around, uh, not watching what she was doing, uh, correcting one of us. Uh, but anyway, uh, there was a lady in our uh, uh, church that didn't have a whole lot, uh, and her husband was on her all the time. Most of the time, she, he wouldn't even be nice enough to give her a ride to church, Jeremy. She'd have to walk. But she said, I'm going. They said sometimes when she come home from church that her husband would whip her because she went to church. But she said, if he beats me to death, I'm going to heaven. But listen to me. One day he said, honey, said if you'll uh, quit going to church, I'll buy you one of them automatic washers. And she give in. There was another man one time that we grew up with, worked in the coal mines, a good man, and he was a godly man, a hard worker. One day his boy went to the mines where he worked, got his automobile, got in it, went down the road, had a car wreck, and killed another man. The only way, listen, that that boy could stay out of the pen was daddy would have to say that he give him permission to drive the car. Listen, he didn't want to see his boy go to jail. And he stood in the courtroom, said, yeah, I told him to come get it. Told a better face lie. But the Bible said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. We're going his way or we're not going at all. Slow down and get my breath. This week I heard some people talking. Now all of you's done it. All of you's been around, most of you men and some of you women. Deer hunting. Past two weeks, boy, you hear more tales than you hear all year about the deer they saw. Yes, sir. And I don't know why they didn't shoot it, but boy, it was big. Yes, sir. Like none other. I've seen them, Chris, take out little boys of hunting, and boy, I know it would be proud. I, I, said, I quit hunting. I just got lazy many years ago, and uh, I used to really love it, but I got lazy. And that was before everybody had four-wheelers. Back when I hunted, if they had four-wheelers, I'd probably still be hunting, but they didn't have them back then. I said I wouldn't hunt no more unless... I had a boy and he took to liking the hunting. I'd go back to hunting. Zach never did show no interest, so therefore, but I can see it, Chris, right now. I can see it well as, as any dad. It would be something for me to take old Zach out as a little boy, give him a, most of the time these men will start their boys out with a 410. 
Yeah, poor tin, it don't buck much uh, when you shoot it. It's not very heavy. Boy, I tell you what, uh, them daddies will take the boys with their 410 by their side. Daddy will have a 30-30 or a 30-06 big old rifle going through the woods. I'm sure they wouldn't be much more proud. I know Ronnie has taken Alex out and he's killed one. I don't know about the rest of you. But listen, they took them little boys out. Like I said, I spent my time in the woods. And I know what it is to kill a deer. And I know how good of a shot it's got you got to be. And I know how quiet you got to be. And I know, listen, what a range is for a 410 and a 30-06. There's a big difference. Boy, they'll come dragging home. I've seen it more than once. Oh, guess who killed the deer? Yes, sir. Yeah, little Junior here killed him a big old ten point buck. I could look at Junior's face and see whether or not he shot the deer or not. What wow, at a young age, Daddy was teaching the boy. I've seen it happen. Daddy would shoot and kill it. Let Junior walk up and shoot it after it was dead. Junior didn't get that deer. Daddy did. But the kingdom of God is like unto this. We've got to be his way or we ain't going. I was listening to some men this week and the Bible teaches us to obey the laws of the land. And my probably my biggest problem is keeping her on the speed limit. And you stick your finger in your ears. That what the, I like to go fast. Yes, sir. But anyway, Ronnie, I hear him talking. This man had killed one. And it, listen, if it's wrong for a sinner, it's wrong for a Christian. He had killed a deer. And he was wanting somebody else to check it in. So he could get another. The kingdom of heaven is likened to this. If we break the least, we're guilty of the greatest. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. I'm glad that for mercy and grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me stop here just a minute. Get my breath again. I was supposed to get it while I was telling you my big deer story. But anyway, you remember back when the Bible said that Jehazi was a servant unto Elisha. The Bible said that Elisha, he would go around performing miracles and doing the, the things that God had called him to do. And Gehazi was there. He was his right hand. Listen to me. The devil would deceive the very elect if possible if we let him in. Yes, sir. If we give space to the devil, he'll move in. Yes, sir. There's a, a right here in this community. There's times we've got to have boundaries. We sure do. If you was to come in and and, and uh, you were to pull into your house this evening and, and they would be a bunch sitting in your driveway drinking beer and you didn't run them off. Listen to me tomorrow evening they'll be on the front porch. And if you don't run them off, the next evening they'll be in the living room. Yes, sir. And if you don't run them off then, listen, the next evening, boys, when you get ready to go to bed, you'll be sleeping on the couch. Yes, sir. That's the way the devil works. And the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Praise the Lord. God had just sent Naaman down to Elisha. Most of you knows the story. Elisha was a good man, an upright man, but he, the Bible said, but he was a leper. There was nothing else but the lighthouse. The Bible said that, uh, make a long story short, Jeremy, that Naaman went down to visit Elisha. He got down there and Elisha told him to go dip seven times in Jordan's river. The Bible said that after some complaining after some moaning, he went down and dipped seven times in Jordan River. He was cured of that leprosy. Well, when he got out of the water, boy, he was happy. And he went back and he told Elisha, he said, now listen. He said, I've been, I'll paraphrase a little bit. I like to paraphrase so I'll know who's been reading the Bible and who ain't. Yes, sir, Reed. But anyway, he said he went back and, and said that he uh, uh, probably told uh, Naaman, he, he, or Elisha, Naaman told Elisha, he said, now I've been at this, I've been fighting leprosy, 
I've used lotion every time. Listen, Tammy had trouble with her shoulders last year. Went on a year better. And boy, I tell you what, we got every cream and every lotion ever was. She was desperate. Yes, sir. Red, you talk, I even put WD-40 on her. Uh, normally, she wouldn't allow that, but it worked on my foot. And I sprayed her down WD-40. She smelled like a, a mechanic shop. Yes, sir. But she was willing to try it. We went to church one time that a man had bad ulcers. And somebody told him to drink rotten tomato juice and it would cure him. You know what? At first he said, I'll not do that. But after a while, when he couldn't sleep for the bellyache, listen, he got him some tomato juice, set it outside. We poured some out down there behind Zach's house. Boy, I, tell you, I got that stuff on my hands. For three days, I could smell that rotten tomato juice. That's a well, listen, but he drank it. It didn't cure him, but he gave it a try. And I believe old Naaman was like that. He tried everything, even though he didn't want to listen to the man of God. That's the way folks are today, Chris. We'll tell them that the Lord's able to meet their needs, that he'll solve their problems, they'll go bankrupt, they'll lose everything they got before they'll come to Jesus. But when Naaman come back to Elisha, he looked at him and he said, listen, said, I've got some things here, some presents that I want to present to you. And the Bible said that Elisha told Naaman, said, I don't want him. The old Gehazi was standing there and they said he was a crook from the beginning. No, he wasn't. Nor God wouldn't have put him with the man of God to be servant. Oh, and like Gehazi stood there and he got to thinking about it and he thought, my goodness gracious, we're running around here pouring church mice. The man just offered you two talents of silver and some new clothes and you told him you didn't want it. He said, I know what I'm going to do. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Gehazi, for you Bible readers, he said, well, I know what I'll do. Yeah. Naaman went back home, started on his journey back home. Gehazi was there and he got to thinking about them two bags of silver and them new clothes. And he said, well, I'll go chasing after him. Yeah. And said the Bible said that he jumped on a horse and took down the road after Naaman and his, and his helpers there, his band that came with him. Naaman turned around and looked and saw Gehazi coming he jumped off of his horse or out of his chariot. I forget just exactly what the Bible explains. And he jumped off and he looked and hollered at Gehazi. He said, is all well? He said, yeah, all is well. He said, right after you left, listen, there was two old poor boys come down. Uh, I forget, Mount somewhere. That'd be some good Bible reading for you. He said they come off the mountain and said they come down there and said they're busted, they're broke, their rents due, car payments is behind. And said uh, uh, my master sent me down here and said if you still got that money and that new clothes, said he'll take them. Well, the Bible said that Naaman was still as generous as he was a few hours before. He doubled the talents, gave him two chains of the garments, sent him back on his way. But boys, listen, old Elisha was up paying attention to what was going on. Gehazi come in and he slipped in the door and, and Elisha said, where you been? Gehazi said, I've just been outside smoking. I've just been outside walking around. He said, no, you ain't. He said, I know you've been up to something no good. He said, you went and got something that you didn't deserve, did you? He said, well, as a matter of fact, I did. Nate Elisha said, that's all right. You'll bear the burden of leprosy just like Naaman did. And from that day forward, he bore leprosy because the Bible said the kingdom of heaven is like unto these. Yeah, Let's read a little bit more. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now listen to me. 
There were several years involved here. There were several years. We're not going to get used to me. It's not so much as it is anymore. But uh, usually if a job is, is a union, seniority counts. If a job's not union, seniority don't really matter. It sure don't. But listen to me. If somebody's got seniority, they'll uh, get have first picks to something. I've seen it, and I know Ronnie's dealt with it until they've changed the rules. It didn't matter if people could perform the job, if they had the seniority, they'd get the job, mess the whole job up. But then they changed the rules and changed the laws. But anyway, uh, you, you, you can look. These virgins kept themselves for years. And they went, and as I was saying there, there's a lot of folks serving the Lord trying to go under seniority. I, that ain't going to work. My goodness gracious, I've been a church member for 50 years or 60 years or 70 years. That don't matter. No sirree. Daddy preached a message one time. Boy, I dwell on it, thought about it, thought about it. As a tree falleth, so shall it lie. Boy, I tell you what, if we die lost, I don't care if Billy Graham's still alive and preaches our funeral. If we die lost, we're going to be raised lost. Yes, sir. But anyway, the Bible said that these ten virgins uh, went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They which were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. I could stop on verse 3 there and preach about two hours. Boy, i tell you what, we can't run on an empty tank, can we? No sirree. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are going out. I'd like to stop there and preach too, Ronnie, but I ain't. Listen to me. Folks is knowing those five foolish virgins knew before they trimmed their lamps that they wasn't going to burn. No sirree. They was hoping for some miracle. They was hoping, uh, listen to me, God's able to supply our needs. Uh, but the Bible said today is a day of salvation. Uh, now's the accepted time. Uh, the call's going forth uh, and the time to work is now. But night time's coming when nobody can work. Uh, listen to me, Chris. Uh, they could have trimmed on them lamps uh, for four days. Uh, and they still wouldn't have burned. Why? Because there was no wool in the vessel. Uh, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The five and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him into the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor wherein, nor the hour wherein the sun of man cometh. Now as I read to you about five or six of these parables, do you realize what it started off reading? Now the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Listen to me. Jeremy, it's serious. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Here in chapter 5 or chapter 25 as it referred to these ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. Now, it don't take a rocket scientist, and all of us knows what a virgin is. They've kept their self for this day. Got down within a few hours of the coming of the bridegroom, 
and they got lazy. Listen to me, they slumbered and slept. Was not ready when the crime went out. The Bible said, wherefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. There's folks all around us, Chris. As I said this morning, the Lord has put upon me a brand new urgency that we've got to get people in before it's eternally too late. There's going to be people that's going to cry and say, Lord, I was ready except. Listen to me. We've got to be fully dressed in the robe of righteousness. We sure do. It's got to be clean and it's got to be spotless and we've got to be ready when the cry is made. There's not going to be a time for us to make things right, for us to run down the road, get us a brand new Bible. Yes, sir, wait, Lord, till I can get to church and go to an altar. The Bible said, wherefore, the kingdom of heaven is like and unto this. We've got to be ready, church, for that hour. We've got to be ready for that time or we're not going to see the kingdom. Excuse me. We're not going to see the kingdom. Amen. Folks might slip in places. We've all done it. Used to be when the carnivals come around, we try every way in the world to slip in. We crawl under fences, crawl through mud, slip under tents. We try to get in, most of the time, get caught. But boys, I'll tell you what, they but one way. And that's to invite Jesus Christ because he's the door to the sheepfold. The Bible said, wherefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. In closing, in verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. Likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with him. And so that he that had received five talents came by the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained five beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliveredest unto me two talents. Go out, behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou to the joy of thy Lord. This is Jesus talking. Remember, then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. But Lord, I was afraid. And I went and hid thy talent in the earth. There thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. Then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. 
and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And again, verse 14 said, For the kingdom of heaven is. It's what it's going to be like, church, if we sing the kingdom of God. Serious. Serious. We ain't going to slide our way in. We ain't going to sneak in. But we're going in with the door. Let us pray. Father, we come before you, Lord. Father, our prayer is that we would be ready for the kingdom. God, that we would be dressed for the kingdom. That we would have a mind for the kingdom, Lord, and a heart for the kingdom. We would be watching for you, Lord, and waiting for you. We wouldn't be slothful. Lord, we wouldn't slumber. We wouldn't sleep. We wouldn't be lazy. But Lord, we would be working and waiting for your coming. Father, help us to be ready for the kingdom. Help us, Lord, to be waiting on you. We love you, Lord, and we appreciate you. Now, Lord, I pray that you would meet the need of someone here tonight. <coughs> Somebody's searching. Somebody's looking. And probably, Lord, the theme of this service, if we picked one tonight, it would be the lighthouse. And I said when I first got up here, if we would take ourselves back, those that has come to the light, those here tonight, Lord, that's got trouble all around them, they're scared. They fear tomorrow. Friends is not helping because friends can't help. Earthly goods cannot help them because it won't satisfy that inner man. It satisfies the outer man. If there's somebody here, Lord, under the sound of my voice. that the only form of help that they see is you. Help them to see that they're headed in the right direction. Help them to see, Lord, that they'll just come to you. Say, Lord, have mercy on my soul. You'll meet their need. We won't get to you or through you, Lord, by our goodness, or by our wisdom, Lord, or our wealth but we'll come as that servant came to the Lord and begin to cry out, Lord, I owe you so much. And I can't pay the debt that I owe, but would you have mercy on me? We can't right our wrongs. We can't blot out our sin and all of our mistakes. And our only hope of freedom, Lord, is through and by you. Help somebody right now, Lord, as we pray. That they would slip out of the seat. Come down, Lord, to an altar of prayer. Father, that they would walk towards the light. That they would run towards the light. Move, Lord, as only you can. I know you want to help somebody. Help us to see that you're the only way, Lord, into the kingdom. Heavenly Father, meet every need as only you can. Somebody else needs to come. Try everything around you. Lord, and, and, and you've looked around. There ain't nothing helping. But you can see help. You can see hope. And unmistakably, you've tried everything else. You must realize and must believe that the Lord can help you if you'll come to Him. Every head's bowed. No one's looking around. Somebody else is wanting to come to an altar tonight. Slip out of your seat. Slip out of your seat. Come down to this altar. The Lord wants to meet your need. Move, Lord, as only you can. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. God, move. Move, Lord. Come sing, Lord. 
why don't you come as we tarry for just a moment why don't you come and give it to Jesus he can help you he can turn your life around help of Lord stand if you would those of you would like to get around the altar let's pray with this young lady Heavenly Father we come before you tonight Lord we know, Lord, that you're able, Lord, to change things. What we're glad of, Lord, you can wash away the past, Lord. You can forgive, Lord, our wrong. You right your wrong. I ask you tonight, Lord, that you would help our, our sister tonight to say, Lord, I'm sorry for the past. I'm sorry, Lord, for the wrong that I've done. And I know that you're my only form, my only hope of salvation. Lord, I ask you to move in my life. Help her to say that tonight, Lord. God, help her, Lord, that she wouldn't hold nothing back. Say, Lord, I, I, here's all of me. Here's all of me. I, want, I, I don't want you to take part of me, but I want you to take all of me. Meet my every need. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for answering. Amen. 